Call me Mr. Flintstone. I'm going to make your bed, bro. You can see my tits get bigger and bigger over time. <laughs> I'm getting hard. <laughs> down. After you come out, your underwear magically shrinks. That's me making the gay videos. I poop Skittles. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. The shirtless guy with the tits out. Oh. I make gay videos probably because that's one of the few areas of knowledge and expertise that I have. It's kind of like my point of reference in life. Who cuts your hair? Gay people. Who's your personal trainer? He's gay too. What I know, it's what my experience is, and so that's what I bring to YouTube. Oh, you lip taste like glitter. And they're not that gay, I mean like, they're gay, but they're not. First there's a little bit of this, then there's some of this, then they do this. They're pretty gay, they're gay. Yes, yes. <laughs> they're totally gay. What? <laughs> they're so gay. Oh. My parents call me Davy Wavy, like when I, as like a nickname when I was little. And when I started my first blog before I did anything YouTube, I said a little Davy Wavy goes a long way. And it turns out that Davy Wavy is a lot more Googleable, <laughs> Googleable than my real name. It ended up working out. So I have my main YouTube channel, and then I have Davy Wavy Raw, my second channel, and then my third channel is fitness because I'm passionate about exercise and I like to share that with people. Show me someone who has believed the same thing their entire life and I will show you someone who has learned nothing. I started posting YouTube videos when YouTube really first started because I thought it would be really cool to kind of, you know, capture my life. And on my eighth video, I saw my neighbor masturbating, made a video about that. It ended up getting millions and millions of views and it kind of just went on from there. And then he like walked away and I saw his butt. <laughs> And I just kept making videos about the things I wanted to make videos about. And I make videos about sexual situations because I think about sexual situations a lot. <laughs> I'm always in my underwear or in some state of undress. And so that's how I started making, it seemed unnatural to put on a shirt to turn the camera on. And so that's kind of what I got into. And then it became a little bit of a shtick. Welcome to Story Hour with Dave Weavey. What you say today can contradict what you said yesterday, and that, I think, is a good thing. I remember the day that my mom called me because she found my YouTube channel, and <laughs> it wasn't a great conversation. Now they know about it. My mom and dad aren't allowed to watch the videos unless I show it to them. David's YouTube channel, I'm not allowed to go on, so I can't tell you anything about it. The whole wide world gets to see it, but we don't see it, correct? We do get to see selected videos. Why does David not want us to watch his YouTube videos? The video that I posted a few weeks ago was what uh, gay guys think about vaginas. They're like concaved in words. Soft, squishy, flat with like little ridges, I guess. I mean, it's just kind of awkward to <laughs> show something like that to your mom. Here's what I think about pussies. There's so many things in there, I don't know. Occasionally, I do sneak a peek and he, and he gets angry at me for, for looking. Well, that's because you leave evidence behind. <laughs> like, you, you click on something and you say you like it. It's, yeah. I, and it's pretty obvious. My dad doesn't care. He's like so over it. He's got like better things to do with his life. <laughs> it's really not that serious for him. I don't go. I don't check his site out. Unless he brings them home or he tells us to go check it out. And some of the ones that we have checked out have been really incredible. If you ask my parents how they were when I came out, they will like proclaim that they were the perfect like P-flag parents, like the poster parents for like accepting your child's sexuality. We always knew, but... Um, well, we just had suspicions. Yeah. We didn't know. We didn't say it out loud. I think that's a tough thing for any parent to go through. It's, it's an adjustment. You still love your, your child. It's just, you have to kind of change your ideas or, or get comfortable. How I remember it is that they sent me to our Catholic priest, which like, we won't even get into the fact that you said you're like 17 year old son to, who just came out of the closet to a priest. <laughs> there are, certainly are worse situations. Kids get kicked out of homes, you know, and it wasn't that, but it wasn't the like rainbows and sunshine that my mom seems to remember her it was. When your child comes out, I think as a parent, you want to be even more protective. We love you. Mwah. <laughs> it took me 17 years to be comfortable enough to come out of the closet to them and really to myself. So I figure I could also give them, you know, some time to become okay with it. And, and they are a lot better. My dad totally gets it. My mom thinks that she gets it, but then she'll say something like, she's like, you know, she's like, I realized today that lesbians are only lesbians because they're too ugly to get men. And I just like look at her and be like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, do you hear yourself? 
And she's like, well, it's true. Look at Rosie O'Donnell. I'm like, Bob. So smoking, I put in a turn off. Whereas a deal breaker is something much bigger. Like if someone has a small penis, the generation that's coming to terms with their sexuality today, it's really a great benefit that they have all these videos at their fingertips just to click away. Like that kid who, the soldier who came out to his father, uh, he, his father was like in Alabama and he called him on the cell phone and, and told his dad. Dad, I'm gay. You still love me? I mean, to see stuff like that is, is really, really powerful. Um, and it's a great resource for people today. Wish I had it, but I'm happy to be a part of it for the for the next generation of youngsters out there. The Google Daisy Wavy. Okay. Um, Actually, I know your videos. I've been a fan for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I get emails all the time from fans um, that watch the videos saying that, that it's been a source of strength for them or inspiration or that they were thinking about ending their life and that not that my videos save their lives, but you know, th that's what they'll say in the email. And to know that even if it's just giving them a little bit of strength, that, that it's helping them in a, in a small way is, it really gives you a sense of purpose in doing it. One of the more inspirational stories was this uh, young man named Brian. And initially I did this video with, it was this flying magic wish paper and you'd write a wish on a piece of paper and then you would burn it in the paper the way it was just designed like floats away. It was a really cool video. And one of the wishes, he wished to be cancer free. Several months later, he emailed me, despite the odds being against me, I am now cancer free. And the doctors say that it's like really nothing short of a miracle. And because a stranger halfway across the country made this, this wish for me that came true, I now believe in, in miracles. And it was it just really kind of like cute moment. And then he told me about how he lived in a Mormon town and how my videos have helped him come out. And he wanted to meet me in person at the Sundance Film Festival where I was going. And I think two weeks before I left, uh, his dad emailed me and he's, his dad said, I don't really know how to tell you this, um, but Ryan killed himself. All you could think about is his parents to go from like the joy of knowing that their son is now cancer free to just being ripped apart when he died at his own hands. Um, and so I did a video to kind of commemorate Ryan and uh, his mom was a part of it. And that was an incredible, incredible moment. My wish is that I hope and I wish that no other family has to endure the awful awful pain and sorrow that we all as a family have felt. At the heart of my videos, I try to put some message that's empowering um, for people when they watch it. For my videos, I travel around a bunch because I think it's kind of fun for people to see like different areas and different cultures and different experiences. And right now I'm in Palm Springs, California. I'm slowly making my transition to LA. I'm probably gonna split my time between Los Angeles and Rhode Island where my family is because LA is, it's kind of where it's at. It's where all the YouTubers are, it's where all the production is, and if I'm gonna take this Davy Wavy thing to the next level, LA is where it's gonna happen. In 10 years, I wanna look back and, and not say, oh, I should've, I could've, I would've. I want to do as much as I possibly can. I want to squeeze every like ounce of juice out of life that I can get. Open your heart and open your mind to the possibilities of this universe. I mean, I think everyone wants to leave the world a little bit better than they left it. And, and whether that's for one person or 100 million people, I don't think that matters. And this is just the platform that I have. So it's what I'm going to use to try to do that. I love gay people. I'm actually a hairless wonder, and in fact, we just found one little piece of, of, of hair right here that I plucked, and yeah, it took 29 years to get that one. I'll hit puberty one of these days, I think. Maybe, maybe 2013. 2013 will be my year. <laughs> I'm Davey Wavy, and you're watching In Focus on The Stylish.